Hey guys, this is Andrew with rockclass101.com and in this week's ukulele lesson, we're gonna be learning Spanish Nights. So this is going to be a really fun one for me to teach because this is the first song that Evan and I have co-written. And there's actually a really interesting story on how this song came about that I'm gonna share with you guys. And the cool thing about how it came about is that it's going to present an idea for songwriting. So for those of you who have never written a song before, or if you've written a thousand songs before, this may give you an idea for a way to approach songwriting that you've maybe not thought about or haven't tried yet. So let me jump into the story. So one night I'm just sitting around watching YouTube and I stumble onto these 80s commercials, so commercials from the 80s, and one of them was a BMW commercial, and it's not a 30 second commercial, it's like a mini movie, it's like two minutes of an epic story. So what's happening is this guy is driving a BMW and he's chasing a train, and on the train is a girl, so he's trying to meet up with her. And while this is happening, there is this epic orchestra soundtrack that's being played in the background. So I'm listening to this and watching this movie and one little section of this orchestra soundtrack really stands out to me. It's just this gorgeous, beautiful melody and harmony. And of course, what do I do? I, I hit pause, pick up my instrument and I transcribe it. So, you know, what, what can I say? I'm a musician. I have to learn anything that I think is really cool. So I learned this little section. It's about six bars. Okay, so keep that in mind. So it's about six bars in length. So over the next couple days, I'm just playing around with this melody that I thought was really, really cool. And since it's only six bars, well, that kind of uh, doesn't really fit the standard of a pop tune. You know, songs in 4-4 usually are four, or most of the time, eight bar sections. So I take this six bars and I add two extra bars. So I add bar seven and eight to the mix. So I had a new chord to the mix. And uh, all over the past couple days, I had been rewriting the melody that I heard from the soundtrack. So kind of just taking it and making it my own. And that's what leads us to the first idea for songwriting. So instead of starting from a blank canvas, an interesting way to approach songwriting is to take a melody and harmony that you are really into, that you know and love, and use that as your basis. So take that melody, maybe rewrite it, rework it so it's not copy paste. So you put your own stamp on it. And then from there, you can start to build the song. So the beginning of the performance that you heard started with that six bar melody that I, that I heard from that BMW commercial. And then when it got to there, that's where I had to add a couple bars to make it fit into a song structure. And so I added. So when I had that, I, I had the idea that, hey, this is kind of a cool start to a song. So after that, I, I had the next idea was to maybe make it more Spanish themed. So the next, section of the tune goes into, I would say, a very traditional chord progression that's used in Spanish music. And it sounds a little bit like this. So that chord progression used in countless songs, one that comes to mind really quick is uh, Sultan's Swing, Dire Straits, which we actually did a lesson on. Um, I'll put it in the description box below. Uh, so basically at this point, you know, I had the first part that I heard from this epic uh, commercial. Then the second idea just, you know, was to make it Spanish and I wrote around that progression. And then my third idea was to uh, hand it off to Evan to write another section. So he wrote the bridge to this and he actually went through and reworked the first and the second melody, kind of added his own little touch to it so he had poetic license. And at the end of it, we got a beautiful piece of music. And the big takeaway also with using this approach for writing is that you're breaking away from your comfort zone. So you may listen to a piece of music that has a chord progression you've never used before, that has a rhythms that you've never 
played before in terms of how you combine it to create a melody, so it really helps break you out of your comfort zone and expand your songwriting ability. So I thought I'd share that story with you guys, and uh, let's go ahead and just talk a little bit now about this lesson. So for this lesson, I've got it split into two parts. In this YouTube video, we're going to be learning the first half of the song, but if you want to learn the second half of the song, you can click this link or go to the site rockclass101.com, do a search for Spanish Nights. On that page, you'll also be able to get the tabs that you can print off and follow along with as a PDF format, as well as access the on-screen tab viewer. So this is a really cool feature where you can hit play, watch the tab scroll across in real time. You can highlight bars to loop sections, slow it down to any speed you wish. Just a really great asset in learning this song that much easier. All right, guys, so a couple things I wanna cover before we dive into learning this song. First thing, if you're following with the tablature, uh, print out Andrew's version. So we're going to be learning a slightly simplified version of what Evan plays. So it's going to make a few of the rhythms easier and it's going to cut out some of the really crazy stuff he does, mainly at the end of the uh, performance where he has those fast runs. So we're not going to tackle that, but we're going to tackle the, the main gist of the song and just make it slightly easier. So print that to follow along with. Uh, secondly, we're going to be using a kind of a unique way for picking and this unique way is going to mimic a guitar pick so hold on one sec so we're going to be mimicking someone who uses a pick or a plectrum such as a guitar player so check this out if I was to use a pick on string four just going down up okay so you can see already that it's a really efficient way to play fast, and that's not even playing fast, but I'm already going ba 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 quite a lot of notes, right? Well, we're gonna copy that, but we're gonna do it with our fingers. So I want you to pretend that you're holding a pick, right? So a pick goes between our thumb and our index finger, just like that, and a little bit of the tip sticks out. Now I want you to pretend that there's a pick in your hand, right? And you can already see that your index finger sticks out a little bit more than your thumb. So I want you to just take this shape and go down, up. So you can see that when I go down, the nail of my index finger hits down, the fleshy part of the index finger goes up. So you're just gonna go down, up, down, up, down, up. Try and keep it in a steady timing. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a... Okay, so we're gonna be doing that because a lot of this song has really, really fast tempo and really fast rhythms that we're playing. So when we approach it as if we were doing a pick, it's going to be a lot easier to play at that faster tempo than trying to go ba 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 finger picking, right? And if you watch Evan's performance, you can see that he's doing the exact same thing. So I have a few issues with my index finger, so I'm going to be doing it as if it was my middle finger. But most people will probably prefer to do it like this, and that's how Evan does it as well. So it's basically mimicking using a pick. Now, outside of that, the rest of the song jumps between a three and a four finger approach for finger picking. So four finger means each finger gets its own string. If we have three fingers, then thumb, thumb, index, middle. So if you're brand new to using three, four finger, and just the thumb for playing, check out our finger picking concepts course that jumps super in depth into those three approaches. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into the first part. We're going to kick off with this little intro, which sounds like this. Okay. So uh, one last thing I forgot to mention too, this song is for low G. So you definitely need the low G ukulele or else things are gonna sound really funky from time to time. So grab the low G and let's kick into it. So this first part is really interesting and you can hear it's got a bit of an Eastern sound to it. So the scale that we're playing out of is A Phrygian dominant, which has a flat two, a flat six, and a flat seven. So really Eastern sounding scale, really cool. One flat two, three, four, five, flat six, flat seven, one. 
So if you want to learn more about scales and music theory, I'll put a link in the description box below to our theory course, which also ties theory into how you can apply it in a jam scenario. But a really cool sounding scale, and that's what this little intro comes straight out of. So this intro I added, this wasn't part of that uh, commercial at all. So it sounds a little bit like that. So let's break it down. We are going to be playing pretty much all eighth notes, but it's kind of like two fields, loose in the timing. And we can add a bit of a palm mute as well. So palm mute means that we're gonna take this part of our hand and touch the saddle, so the edge of the saddle, where the fourth string meets the saddle, you're lightly gonna to touch it. It's gonna give you that muted sound versus if you had an open sound. So you don't want to push too hard or else it's going to make it sound off. You want to basically lightly touch as if you were muting the same pressure as if you were doing a muted hit. Okay, so you can add that and then maybe at the second half of it switch over to plucking just regular notes. So you can hear the first one is a little muffled, just the first half and then the second half rings a little bit more. Okay, so we're gonna play second fret on string four and then the third fret on string four. And follow that up with the first fret of string three and then the second fret of string three. So you can see that we're actually playing out of a box, right? So each finger gets its own fret. So I have two, three, one, two, and if I add the little palm mute, Okay, so at this point we can slide up to the fourth fret. One and two and three. So I can slide up. Two, three, one, two, slide up to the fourth fret. Now from here, keep your middle finger on that fourth fret, add your index to the third fret of string two. You're gonna pluck those two notes, go down a whole step to two one, pluck those two notes, and then you're basically making an A chord shape, but we only need the first finger on the first fret of string three. So you're plucking that with the open E. So together you have one and two and three and four and... So you can hear a little bit of a ritardando starts on the third beat. One and two and three and four so that's the thing, you're playing this one to fill. So there's no steady tempo. We just kind of want to have a nice, natural sounding intro before we kick into that first melody. So again, one and two and three and four and... But let's try together and we'll add a little retardando. So slow, three and four and... One and two and three and four and... Now this end of four, you can hold out because it's gonna be a bit of a fermata. So you can hold it and let it linger for as long as you wish. So let it sustain for as long as you wish before you kick into theme one, okay? Now we're counting out rhythms as we go throughout this lesson too, if you haven't realized by now and all the little hits up there. So if you're brand new to counting and understanding rhythmic notation, do check out this lesson. But the best way to learn to count rhythms and really comprehend how rhythm and timing connect is to learn to read. So I'll put a link in the description box below to our reading course. Okay, so now we're jumping into theme one. Let me play the first couple bars and we'll break it down and learn it. Okay, so let's start with just that part. So the first chord we have is a D minor, so it's gonna be a partial bar. We're gonna lay our index finger flat on the fifth fret strings, one, two, and three, and then take your pinky, add it to the eighth fret of string one. So that's gonna be our first hit, and we're gonna hold this out for a half note. So after that, we're going to lift that pinky up. You're gonna play seven on string one, and then eight on string one. So together you have one, two, three, four, so pretty simple, half followed by quarter notes. So let's try that one together. Three, four, one, two, three, four. Nice. After this, we're going to A minor. It's that stock E minor chord just moved up the neck. So if you're new to moving chords up the neck, 
to where they become other chords, I'll put a link to a lesson on the caged method. It's a great method to learn and it helps break you away from only playing chords down here at the beginning of the neck. So we've got nine, eight, seven staircase shape and we're going to hit that, hold it out for a beat and a half and then hit the third string. So you have one and two end. So that end of two will last the rest of the bar. So let's see if we can try this. Let's see if we can tie the first bar into the second bar. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, and two, and three, four. Awesome. So our third and our fourth measure will sound like this. Okay, so we have the exact same rhythm for these next couple bars. So it's going to start with a B flat chord, and this is going to be a partial bar. So again, go back to laying flat on five strings, one, two, and three, but add the middle to six on string two. So we're going to strum three down, hold that for half of the bar, then take your pinky, put it on eight on string two, and then play the fifth fret of string one, which is barred. So you have one, two, three, four, Okay, now here's the thing, this whole song has a lot of bar chords, so do make sure that you have proper left hand form, and that doesn't mean only in front of the neck, but also behind the neck, this U-shaped gap. So I'll put a link in the description box below to our lesson that covers everything you need to know about making bar chords and all these basic chords too. So if you need to recap on the fundamentals, check that link as well for that lesson. So back to this, so we have one, two, three, four. Okay, so after that, our next bar, bar four, will go to an F chord. And we have the same rhythm as before, so we have a dotted quarter, one and two, end. And then we're gonna hit string three. So the F chord is middle ring index, so we have five, five, three, strumming three down. And then we're gonna, again, hit string three to finish it up. So let's try third into fourth bar. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, and two, and three, four. Awesome. So now let's recap. Let's try bars one through four. Here we go. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, and two, and three, four. One, two, three, four, one, and two, and three, four. Now the, another stylistic thing you can do as well is put a little bit of vibrato onto some of these chords just so they shine a little bit more. And again, I know I've linked a thousand, there's a lot of lessons because this is a intermediate advanced arrangement, but there's a lot of things that go into this playing, but I'll put a link to uh, how to do vibrato in the description box as well. All right, so let's tackle the second half now. So we're going to look at bars five and six. So it sounds like this. Okay, so let's hear that one one more time. Okay, so it starts with the basic G minor. Again, we're gonna approach with strumming three down. So go ahead and strum three down. And then from here, we have our first change in the rhythm. So this chord is gonna be a dotted quarter. Our next hit will be on the end of two. One and two, end. So it's gonna be that first fret of string one again. After that, you're gonna lift that index finger up, play the open A, and then play the third fret of string two. So you have one and two and three, four. So you're finishing up with quarter notes. After that, go ahead and lift that ring finger up, and you're gonna make a D minor, but again, we've been ignoring string four so far. So you, you can see all the chords have ignored string four. So our D minor, instead of the full cowboy chord basic shape, will be from three down, so we have middle, index, and open A. So for this one, again, we can strum three down, and then we're going to finish up with second fret, and then stretch with your pinky to five on string one. And if you need help with playing stretches and getting used to these crazy, crazy gaps that are created, I'll put a link in the description box below for a lesson on increasing left hand reach. But that's what our bar sounds like. One, two, and three, four. 
So we have quarter followed by eighth, and then it gets held up for the rest of the measure. So let's see if we can try that one together. Three, four, one, two, and three, four. Okay, so again, it's strum, then string three, and then stretch and play five on string one. All right, so let's backtrack. Let's try five into six. Here we go. Ready, go. One, two, and three, four. One, two, and three, four. Okay, now we're going into our home run stretch. So this is the part that I added, just to kind of complete the phrase. So this wasn't in the, uh, the commercial at all, in that orchestra arrangement. So we're going to a diminished and then resolving to the tonics. We have an E diminished seven, and it's gonna to resolve to an A5. So this is a little bit of an awkward chord shape to play this diminished. So to form it, put your ring on six on string four, middle goes on four on string three, index goes on three on string two. Okay, so once you get that chord shape in, here's what these next couple bars sound like. So we have bum, ba, da, da, dum. Okay, so a bit of a finger frenzy happening. So we can pluck this chord or we can strum it from four down. Up to you, which one you wanna do. But that's gonna last for a dotted quarter, one and two. So on the end of two, you're gonna hit string two. And then from here, shift the middle finger up to the fifth fret of string three. Pluck that note and then hit string two again. So rhythmically wise, we have one and two and three, four. So we see those quarter hits at the end, right? One and two and move it up, three, four. And from here, we're going to an A5 power chord. So this is index on two, string four. Ring is on four, string three. Pinky's on five, string two. And we can pluck that. So you may want to practice this two bars the most, because I think that's going to be the most tricky, especially with this kind of awkward movement of the middle finger going up a half step. So together we have one and two and three, four, one, two, three, four. So a whole note for the last bar. Let's try those two bars together. Three, four, one and two and three, four, one, two, three, four. And if I go any bit too fast, you can use these uh, instructions to slow down the YouTube player, but the on-screen tab viewer, which is available for premium members, will let you set it incrementally and highlight bars, loop sections, all of this cool stuff that really makes learning these songs much easier. All right, so let's backtrack. Let's try bars five through eight, and then we'll try one through eight. So here we go, five through eight. Three, four. And if we go one through eight, so everything so far, we get three, four, one, two, three, four, one, and two, and three, four, one, two, three, four, one, and two, and three, four, one, 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 two, three, done. Nice. So the thing too is you want to think about the fill. This is like a, it's kind of like a love fill, like the guy's chasing the girl kind of vibe. So you really want to put a lot of fill into the playing. So, you know, you don't have to be super strict. You can use a little bit of rubato. You don't have to be strict to the tempo per se, like a robot. Um, and you can put some of that vibrato into there and you can just play it soft and slow and a delicate touch. So we have just a soft kind of feel to it. So again, we, we actually just put out a, a really great lesson on this um, last month. So we do a live lesson every single month and each month the topics 
topic is different. And last month was all about how to play with fill. You know, so it's not only about playing the notes, but it's about how you are playing the notes. So I'll put a link to that below, and it talks all about that. And it's a, it's so use so needed for a song like this that's just so soft and delicate in the first part, and then when it kicks into the Spanish chord progression, it gets more intense. So really, really good things to think about, not just playing the right notes, but how you're playing them to fit the mood of the song. All right, so let's take a look at the second half of this theme one. So this is gonna be bar nine. And this is basically, so bars nine through 16 is gonna be the same chord progression. So all the same chords, but we're just gonna add variations, kind of fill it up a little bit more. So fill up the harmony, fill up the melody a little bit more. And that's basically all it does. So let me play the first couple. So bars nine and 10, then we'll break it down. But keep that in mind, same chord progression and nothing, nothing else is happening but more embellishment. Okay, so there's the first couple. So back to D minor. So we're gonna strum this. And an idea too, is since we've been talking about how we are playing with, uh, in inserting feeling into it. We can play this with a little bit more, oomph, so a little bit more emphasis. All right, so it starts to get a little bit more intense. So we're going to make that D minor, we're going to strum, then we can play string three, and then string one. So we're putting quarter notes on beat one and four and eighths in the middle. So one, two, and three, and four. So think of that rhythm, pretty, pretty simple. One, two, and three, and four. Okay. So again, we have strum of, strumming of the chord, string three, and then string one. So strum, two, and... After that, lift the pinky up, and you're gonna strum from two down. So it's just string two and one. And then we're going to play seven and eight on string one. So a little walk up, right? So we have... Ba doo doo ba da da. Okay, so together you strum three one strum seven eight. Rhythm wise, one two and three and four. Okay, so let's try just that bar together slow. Three, four, one two and three and four. Nice. Going to the next one, so we're to the staircase for A minor. Sounds like this. So cool little walk down and we have a double stop hits, so two notes at the same time. Okay, so back to A minor and our rhythm for this one is gonna be one, two, end. So we have one, two, end. That end of two is gonna be a quarter note. One, two, end. So we're holding into beat three, and then we're shifting down a whole step. Okay, so let's talk about the hits that we're doing. So we're gonna strum three down, then we're gonna hit string three, and then we're going to pluck three and two. Okay, so you have one, two, end. So recapping, you have one, two, end. So it's at this point where we hold into beat three, but we're gonna lift the index finger up and we're gonna take this shape, so the third and the middle finger, we're gonna go down a whole step to seven, six. You're gonna pluck that and then lay flat with the index back to that fifth fret, cross strings one, two, and three. But we only need to pluck three and two. So together you have one, two, and three, and four. So the last two hits, getting the rhythm is really vital. So you're hitting on the end of three and then hitting on beat four. And that beat four lasts for a quarter. So, and four. Together again, you have one, two, and three, and four. Okay, so let's see if we can try that one. Here we go, three, four. One, two, and three, and four. Okay, so now let's backtrack. Let's try bar nine and 10 together. Three, four, one, two, and three, and four. One, two, and three, and four. Awesome. So from here, you're already set up to go into B flat. So just add that middle finger. 
And we have the same rhythm as the ninth bar. One, two, and three, and four. And pretty much the same right hand approach, but different strings. So for this one, we're gonna strum the B flat, then we're gonna play string three, string one, and then we're going to play three and two together. So I like to do a little strum right there. And then follow it up with the eighth fret of string two, and then the fifth fret of string one. So rhythm wise, I have one, two, and three, and four. Let me try one more time, a little cleaner. One, two, and three, and four. Okay, so I have strum, three, one, strum, two, one. So that second strum on beat three is just string three and two. So really important that you grab that because that melody note is that. So again, we have one, two, and three, and four. Cool, let's try it together. Three, four. One, two, and three, and four. Nice. After this, we're back into the F chord. And it sounds like this. Okay, so we're gonna make the F chord and we're gonna go strum, three, pluck. And your pluck is gonna be three and two. One, two, end. So that end can last the remainder of the bar. So one, two, end. Okay, so let's see if we can do this. Let's tie 11 into 12. So starting on B flat. Three, four, one, two, and three, and four, one, two, and three. Rest. Cool. So that gives us the first half of the second half, right? So let's see if we can try this now. Let's try 9, 10, 11, and 12. So starting on D minor, here we go. Three, four, one, two, and three, and four. One, two, and three, and four. One, two, and three, and four. One, two, and three, four. Nice. So now we're in our home run stretch to finish up this first theme and the first melody of this tune. So jumping into G minor sounds like this. Okay, so let's break that one down. So go ahead and make G minor. We're gonna strum three down, then play string three and string one. So rhythm wise, we have one, two, end. So here we have, on beat three, we have a 16th followed by an eighth. So a quick hammer on pull off. Okay, so the trick here is that we want to keep these other fingers down, planted, so we increase the sustain of the chord. Okay, so you, after you play the first part of the bar, one, two, and lift that index finger up and you're going to play the open A and then hammer down to the first fret and then pull off to the open A. Okay, so that happens on beat three. After that, finish up with string two, fret three. So one, two, and three, four. All right, so let's give that one a shot. Three, four, one, two, and three, four. Nice. So our next bar is actually the same as what we did for bar six. So that D minor, all identical. So you had strum three down, play string three, and then stretch with your pinky to five on string one. So one, two, and three, four. So since we've done it, we'll skip it, but let's try this. Let's try bar 13 and 14 together. Here we go. Three, four. One, two, and three, four. One, two, and three, four. Nice. Now we're going into the E diminished seven and the A5. So again, E diminished seven is gonna be the exact same hits. So again, we have one and two and three, four. So that bar is identical. Then we go to A5. The first hit is just that chord, so we can pluck that chord again. But here's where we're gonna start a little retardando, so we're gonna to start to slow down. One, two, three, and you're literally walking straight up. So you're gonna pluck, then play string three, and string four. And that fourth 
string, we can do a fermata. So one, two, three, four, but we can keep, to, keep holding it for as long as we wish. But the idea here is that we have a bit of a retardando. So let me play the last four bars. You can get the feel of it. Okay, so just a gradual slowdown. So let's try uh, bar 15 and 16 together. So here we go, three, four, one, and two, and three, four, one, two, three, four. Nice. If we backtrack, let's try 13 through 16. Here we go. Three, four, one, two, and three, four, one, two, and three, four, one, two, and three, four, one, two, three. Done. Nice. Now nine through 16. Okay, here we go. Three, four, one, two, and three, and four, one, two, and three, and four, one, two, and three, and four, one, two, and three, 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 four, one, two, three, all right, so that's the basic gist of it. And as you guys can hear, the second half, so nine through 16, just had more embellishment. So it just made it more full sounding than the first eight bars. But keep in mind the, the feel. I know we breezed through it with the demo nine through 16, but really think about how you're playing. It should be a really romantic type of feel. So really soft, gentle, uh, slow moving, just a lot of emotion thrown into the mix. So let's go ahead and move on now to theme number two. And here's where we get more of the Spanish feel. And let's start by talking about the progression that's used. So there's four chords that are used throughout this next theme. So let's cover those four chords. Um, they're all bar chords, by the way. So just wanna throw that out there, but let's learn all four real quick. And after we learn it, we'll learn what the actual theme is playing. So the first chord is gonna be a D minor. So remember, we already played D minor with the th index laying flat on five strings, one, two, and three. The only difference here is we're gonna add the ring to complete this, and that ring is on seven on string four. Okay, so there's your first chord. So this is gonna be for bars one and two of theme two. So technically we're on bar 17 of the tune, but to make it easier for me to follow along, um, this theme two is 16 bars in length, so I'm gonna to refer to this as bar one, two. Okay, so the third and fourth bar of theme two is going to be C. So it's a partial bar, lay flat on third fret strings one and two with the index, middle goes on four on string three, ring goes on five on string four. From there, you're going to take this chord shape, move down a whole step, so three, two, flat on one. We have B flat, and then to the stock A. Okay, so each chord lasts for two bars, so you one, two, three, four, 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 one, two, three, four. Okay, so get comfortable with that movement and that progression, and let's jump into learning it. Here's what the first couple bars sound like out of D minor, and this is where we're doing that guitar pick kind of technique. So watch the right hand and it sounds like this. Okay, so rhythmically wise, kind of interesting stuff happening here. We have triplet getting thrown into the mix. So eighth note triplets. So if you're new to the understanding eighth note triplets, I'll put a link in the description box below, but we're going to move forward now with the assumption that you understand eighth note triplet rhythm. So the first hit, I have a rasgato strum. Okay, so if you're new to this technique, it's basically just pinky, third, second, first. It creates a big sound. There's a lesson I did on a flamenco tune called La Hetanita. I'll put it in the description box below that covers the mechanics behind doing this technique. So if you're new to it, check that lesson out. But I would recommend doing a rasgato strum for the first one so we get a big, bright, loud, pronounced strum sound. So we have one, okay? 
on beat two, you're going to start the triplet. Triplet. So three hits on string four. Okay, so that technique. Again, use the index finger, hold, pretending like you're holding a pick, and just go down, up, down. Okay, but I'm going to use the middle because I have some problems with my index finger. Okay, so I have one triplet. Okay, now on beat three, you're gonna hit just the fourth string by itself. That's gonna be a quarter. So one triplet three. Okay, so we have Roschiato, down, up, down, up. So we can hit that beat three with an up strum just to keep the down, up progression going. Okay, and then for beat four, we have a triplet again. Triplet. So you can see the rhythm, and I have it up there. One triplet three, triplet. So keep, get that rhythm stuck in your head. One, triple it, three, triple it. Okay, so that rhythm is going to be used a lot. We'll have a mix of quarter notes and eighth note triplets throughout this whole theme two section, okay? So again, we have strum, triple it, hit, triple it. Okay, so strum with the Roschiato strum. Strum, triple it, three, triple it. And again, I'm going strum, down, up, down, up down up down okay so that's my right hand approach so that's the first bar now for the second bar it sounds like this so you can see we have quarter followed by all triplets one triplet 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 okay so it gets a little bit more busy now we need to talk about something we need to talk about our transition so we have this crazy run that happens on the fourth string, but when do we move from this chord to be able to play this? That's the big th question right here. So here's what I think is best. I think it's actually best to move into position to play 7, 9, 10, and then walking backwards. I think it's best to move into position to play that on beat four of bar one. So one, triple it, three, triple it. So I think it's actually best to switch over to your index finger on beat four of bar one. So if we were to try bar one by itself, let's try it together and switch to your index finger to that seventh fret on beat four. So let's try it slow. Three, four, strum, triple it, three, switch, triple it. Okay, let's try again. Three, four, strum, triple it, three, triple it. So let's take a look now at bar two. So it's gonna be hitting just once, so a quarter note hit for the first. The rest are all triplets. So we have one, triple it, so all on the seventh fret. One, triple it, and then we have seven, nine, ten, ten, nine, seven. So down, I'm sorry, so up, down. Seven, nine, ten, ten, nine, seven. So you can see I'm just going all alternate picking as well. So I'm going down, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. So all alternate picking. So that's a lot to comprehend, but just go down and then down ups from there. So one, triple it, triple it, triple it, seven. Sev, 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 nine, ten, ten, nine, sev. So all on string four. Okay? So let's try just that bar together. Three, four, sev. Sev, 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 nine, ten, ten, nine, sev. Awesome. Now if we backtrack, let's try one into two. Don't forget to switch on beat four of bar one. Three, four, one, triple it, three, triple it, one. Triple it, one, two, three, one, two, three. Let's try again. Three, four, one, triple it, three, triple it, one, triple it, seven, nine, ten, ten, nine, seven. Awesome. Pretty cool stuff, right? Now the next section is basically going to be the same thing. So the same rhythm for as we saw in bars one and two, same rhythm for bar three and four, and same movement for the most part that we had for bars one and two. So basically just swap, swapping chords out, okay? So let's, let me play these next couple bars, bar three and four, then we'll break it down. Okay, so for this one, same Roscoe strum on the C. 
Then we're going to go five, 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 and then switch with the index finger. Five, five, five. Okay, so you have one, triple it, three, triple it. Okay, so same approach, right? Let's give it a shot. Three, four, one, triple it, three, triple it. Okay, then the next bar starts with a quarter, five, 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 and then walking up and then down. Five, seven, nine, nine, seven, five. So a bit of a stretch, one third, fourth. Five, seven, nine, nine, seven, five. So that fourth bar is one, triple it, five, seven, nine, nine, seven, five. Okay, let's try that fourth bar slow. Three, four, five, 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 seven, nine, nine, seven, five. Okay, so bars three and four together. Three, four, one. Triple it three, triple it one, triple it five, seven, nine, nine, seven, five. Nice. Let's backtrack. Let's try one through four. D minor to C. Three, four, one, triple it three, triple it one, triple it seven, nine, ten, ten, nine, seven, boom. Triple it five, triple it five. Triple it, five, seven, nine, nine, seven, five. So the hard thing here is going to be the transition, especially when you finish it. So work on that transition. So you want to just take the last little section, take that, and go into there. So loop that section. Triple it, triple it, strum. Right, so you want to get the muscle memory down so you go quickly into that and add that Roschiato hit. All right, so now let's take a look at the fifth bar. So we're going to B flat. So move that C chord down a whole step and we're gonna do the same exact movement. So so the exact same movement of the C chord where you had the whole step gap for that little end run. So start out with the B flat. We have strum, three, 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 three. Three, 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 five, seven, seven, five, three. So the exact same movement. So I don't think we need to cover too much. Let's try it together. Here we go. Three, four, one, triple it, three, triple it, one, triple it, three, five, seven, seven, five, three. Cool. So not hard since it's the same as the C. And then finally, we're into the ending of this. So bar seven and eight will be the A chord. So cool little uh, contrast right here, but for the most part, the same stuff that you're hearing. So go ahead and make this stock A, and we've got strum, two, 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 two. Now this time around, we don't have to switch fingers, so we keep that middle finger anchored. So we're seeing the same hits as before. Strum, two, 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 two. Okay, looking at the eighth bar, two. Two, 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 three, two, three, five, three, five. So walking up this time. So we have one, triple it, three, two, three, five, three, five. So we're gonna use our middle and then, I'm sorry, we're gonna use our ring. <laughs> I forget which finger that was. We're gonna use our ring and then ring and index. So ring, middle, ring. So three, two, three, then go up a whole step. Five, three, five. We can use third and first for that. So that last bar we have one, two, 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 three, two, three, five, three, five. Let's try that together. Ready, go. One, triple it, three, two, three, five, three, five. So you also notice too that I can, I can lift that index finger up probably when I get to the second half of that eighth bar. Okay, so together, those two bars. Sound like that. Let's try it, but slower. Three, four, strum. Two, 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 three, two, three, five, three, five. It's a mouthful to say, but I think you got it. Okay, so let's backtrack. Let's try it from B flat to A, so the second half. Three, 
four, boom. Triple it three, triple it one, triple it three, five, seven, seven, five, three, A. Triple it three, triple it one, triple it three, two, three, five, three, five. Nice. So now let's try all eight bars. One, two, ready, go. One, triple it three, triple it one, triple it seven, nine, ten, ten, nine, seven, boom. Triple it three, triple it one, triple it five, seven, nine, nine, seven, five, boom. Triple it three, triple it one, triple it three, five, seven, seven, five, three, boom. Triple it three, triple it one, triple it three, two, three, five, three, five. Awesome. So the big thing here is contrasting theme one is that theme two is really expressive and has just a lot more power so that you want to reflect that in your playing. Right, you want to have oomph going through instead of that nice and soft that we heard in the first theme. So keep that in mind as you're working on this and building speed in it. Now for the second half, we're looking at the ninth bar. If you're following on the tab, this is bar 25. But uh, to make it easier for me, let's call it the ninth bar. So we're looking at the ninth and the tenth bar. So same chord progression, but this time we're gonna be building the chords not by playing on string four, but by playing across the four strings. So in essence, we're gonna be arpeggiating the chords. So let me show you what that sounds like. So I'm gonna play the first couple bars here. So bar nine and 10. So what do you hear? The same rhythms, but a different approach for playing it. So one, triple it, three, triple it. And that's the same rhythm that's used in bar 10. Okay, so keep that in mind. And it's actually the same rhythm that looks like it's played throughout almost all of these next eight bars. So that makes it easy. So again, we can do a crazy Rascato strum for the first hit. And then we're gonna go triple it on string four, and then go to the, uh, third string, hit that once, and then triple it. So you have one, triple it, three, triple it. Okay, the next bar, play string two, triple it, and then string one, and then triple it. We're gonna strum. So it's kind of building the chord, right? So you have strum, four, 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 three, 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 two, 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 one, strum, strum, strum. Okay, the whole time we have that alternate going, right? Down, down, up, down, up. Down, up, down, up. Down, up, down, up. Down, up, down. Okay, so keep that in mind. That's gonna be the easy way and we're still doing the up until the last, which can be a regular strum, okay? So let's try that one together, not too hard. Here we go. Three, four, strum. Triple it, three, triple it, two. Triple it one, ba ba ba. Nice. So moving into the C chord, same right hand pattern, same right hand rhythm. Let's give it a shot. Three, four, strum. Triple it three, triple it two, triple it one, strum, strum, strum. Moving to the next one, the B flat's the same exact right hand, same rhythm. Strum, triple it three, triple. Triple it one, strum, strum, strum. Okay, so where it gets different is gonna be the last part. So it's over the A section. And that A is gonna walk diminished chords up. So here's what the last couple bars sound like. Okay, so that's nice and slow through the last part. So let's cover what's happening here. We're starting on the A. We can have that crazy accented drum, but we have the same rhythm going. One, triple it, three, triple it, one, triple it, three, triple it, and then into the last ones as well. So what you probably notice is that, oh, hey, snap, we've got an extra couple bars at the end, right? So this, one, triple it, three, triple it, one, triple it, three, triple it, that covers the 15th and 16th bar, and then we have a couple bars added 
to finish up this. And that's gonna be a full-on bar chord up at the neck. But before we tackle those last couple, let's tackle 15 and 16. So make the A, you're gonna do the crazy Raskiao strum, and then we're gonna go down, up, down, just full-on chord, down, down, up, down. Next, we're going to this diminished seven chord shape. So you've probably played this one a lot. So one, three, two, four on string, frets three and four across all four strings. Okay, so from this one, we're gonna move the exact same shape up a step and a half. That's, diminished chords are symmetric. So when you move up a step and a half, it just rearranges these exact same notes in different positions. Okay, so you're going from three and four, so frets three, four, to frets six, seven, and then you're gonna go up again, one more step and a half to nine and 10, okay? And while you're doing this, you're keeping that same rhythm attack. Three, triple it, one, triple it, three, triple it. So you have one, triple it, three, triple it, one, triple it, three, triple, three, triple it. So see, even I make mistakes, right? But let's try it together. So here we go, these two bars together, 15 and 16. Three, four, one, triple it, three, triple it, one, triple it, three, triple it. Okay, and I think only for the A, the first hit, I'm doing the Raschiato. The rest of it, um, you can just do a regular strum down. So going into these last two, so these are our bonus bars. So this would be bar 17 and 18. So we can do a full on bar chord. So lay flat on the ninth fret, cross all four strings, add your pinky to 12. If you wanna make it easier, then just drop that index finger down to, uh, to not cover string four. So you, you would cover three down and just strum from three down. So I wouldn't add the open G, I think it sounds a little muddy, but I would strum three down to make it easier if you don't wanna do all four. So I think my hand's getting a little tired after all these bar chords. That's what I'm gonna do for right now. So I'm gonna go one, triple it, three, triple it, one. Okay, so let's try that. Ready, go. Down, down, up, down, 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 up, down, down. So this last hit, one, two, three, four. That last hit will be for a half note. One, two, three, four. And then I can take this ninth fret and just hit that and slide down. Okay, so let me show you those two bars together. So it sounds like this. One, triple it, three, triple it, one, two, three, four. Okay, so let's try those two together. Three, four, one, triple it, three, triple it, one, two, three, four. Nice, and if we backtrack, let's see if we can do these last, how many bars is this? This is 10 bars, right? It's pretty simple, the first part of it, because it's the same right hand. Let's see if we can tackle all of that. So we're gonna try nine through 18, okay? So starting on D minor, here we go. One, two, ready, go. One, triple it three, triple it 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 one. So a lot to grasp, but really, really cool stuff in this lesson. So guys, that's gonna complete everything for our part one lesson. But if you wanna learn the second half of this tune, that's what we're gonna be covering in the part two lesson. So you can click this link right here or go to the site rockclass101.com, do a search for Spanish Nights. And don't forget too that on that page, you can also get the tabs to print off, keep for your records and access the really cool on-screen tab viewer. So that interactive tab player where you can hit play, watch the tab scroll across in real time. You can highlight bars, slow it down to any speed you wish. Just a really great asset, especially when tackling a tune that's uh, toughy like this one. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this lesson and I will see you in the part two lesson. Thanks.